What is happening, y'all? I am so excited, ecstatic to see my family today. But I'm even more excited to be able to kick this off. I declare war. Now, when I first saw that and read that, my first question was, what in the world and why are we declaring war? What are we declaring war for? Why? And church, the only answer that I could fathom and I prayed about and the Lord gave to me was because we're in a war. We are in a spiritual war right now. If God were to open our eyes to what is actually going on right now, all around us, we would be so terrified of the immense battle that is happening. In church, it should scare you a little bit just knowing that. And church, if anyone knows, anyone who's been in the military or heard about war, there's so many things that are going on all at the same time. There's so many different adversaries that are being faced all at the same time. And church, in this spiritual battle that we're going through right now, one of the adversaries we're going to have is the devil himself, the enemy, the one who goes against God, goes against all of his sovereignty. He goes against us. He comes at us like a lion and he's clever like a snake. Speaks, from, speaks to us from behind the wall. In church, the second one I want to mention to you right now is the world. Now, I'm not talking about BBC America and our planet, blue planet with the beautiful trees and the mountains and the ocean. That's beautiful. God created that. I'm talking about the worldview, the perspectives and the things that the world puts on pedestals, everything they want us to be, this idea of perfection that doesn't exist. That's the worldview I'm talking about. That's the, one of the adversaries we have. And church, the last one, is the most, most difficult enemy to face. It it puts doubt on us. It judges us. It criticizes. It shreds us down, tears us apart. They're the most judgmental. They come at us every day from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. They come at us harder than anybody else in the world ever could. And if you haven't caught on, church, the number one adversary we will ever face in our lives is ourselves. Ourselves. We are our own worst enemy. We judge ourselves more than anybody else does. We have this idea of what the world thinks perfection is, and we strive for it, but when we fail, we just destroy ourselves even further. We keep pushing ourselves down and down and down. We are the masters of self-sabotage. We are our own worst enemy. And in in studying that and everything like that, I was able to find a story back in 2018. In 2018, the art world would be just dramatically changed. The artist named Banksy, his name was Banksy. Can I turn to your neighbor and say Banksy? Banksy. Banksy. To emphasize that B there, Banksy. An artist, he, was in, he had a painting go up in Great Britain. It went for an American currency, $1.4 million. It went for $1.4 million. That's a lot of money. I don't know who wants to pay for that. But it went up for auction in Great Britain. But Banksy decided to play a prank in the art world. He rigged this painting to do something very specific when the gavel fell and the, and the painting was sold. So on the day it was sold, as the, that gavel fell and hit the table or the, whatever that little circle thing is called, I don't know what it is, whenever, whenever it hit that, one sound would shock the world forever. <laughs> The painting was shredded. <laughs> shredded in front of everybody. It was shredded. It was gone. And there was actually guards posted around the painting that day. No one knew why they were there, but they were there. But at one point it became obvious that they were there to protect the painting from the people. As the guards turned around and noticed the painting was shredding itself, that was rigged in the frame, I might add, no one knew that they had to protect the painting from itself. Church, we have the shredder with us every single day. We may not have it built around us, but we carry it like a book bag everywhere we go. We carry the shredder. So when circumstances get difficult and things don't go the way we want to, it affects our feelings, our emotions, our thought process changes. We pull it out and we doubt ourselves. We bring ourselves down and we shred ourselves. We do that every day. Church, our thoughts can change the way we feel. And if you think about just shredding yourself, what do you think is going to happen to your feelings? What do you think is going to happen? You're going to feel down, sad, depressed, angry, frustrated. All these things will enter your mind. Church, we need to step out and do something different. 
And I want you, what I want you to get today is the fact you can change the way you feel by changing the way you think. You can change the way you feel by changing the way you think. And church, in this world, there's going to be many, many different distractions. Many different distractions are going to come to you. But you must change the way you react to those distractions and how you think about those distractions. And church, it's because of that and everything we face every day, I, there's no doubt in my mind that we are in a war. And church, in this war, we need to change the way we think by thinking like a wolf. We got to think like a wolf. Now, some of you might be questioning, why a wolf out of every other creature in the world? Why a wolf? Why in the world would you want to be a wolf? Let's talk about that for a second. A wolf is very intelligent. The empathy for the pack they're in is astounding. Their leadership qualities are outrageous. And they're fierce animals, I might add, as well as they're goal-minded. A wolf is goal-minded. When there's a goal set, they go after it. Because even if they fail, they keep moving forward. We need to have this thought process in this, in this war. We must think like a wolf. Church, today, we need to make sure we think like a wolf. Because you are what you think. Would you all agree that you are what you think you are? You feel what you are because what you think you are. Church, in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Whatever you think about in your heart, about yourself, that's how you're going to feel you are. That's exactly how you're going to feel you are. Do you think you're the greatest? You're going to feel like you're the greatest. Am I correct? But in our standpoint, especially in this battle, we always think we're the worst. We put ourselves on the lowest pedestal. So we feel as if we're the same. We feel as if we're the same. Church, if you have a pen with you or you have your phones out, go ahead and write this down for me. Negative thoughts can't lead to a positive life. Negative thoughts can't lead to a positive life. Church, and I don't know if anyone even understands this, but how can a negative plus a negative plus another negative thought equal a positive outcome? How does that work? How does that math work? How can negative things equal to a positive thing? So when we fill our minds and our thoughts and our heads with all these negative ideas, these negative perspectives, these negative thoughts, when in the world is positivity supposed to enter? We must think like a wolf and think about something different. And in Colossians chapter 3, if you would, please turn to Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Paul states what we should be thinking about, what our minds should be stated on. Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 1. So if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. Let's jump back into verse 1 for a quick moment. So if you've been raised with Christ, if you've been raised with Christ, if you don't know what that means, let me tell you. If you've been raised with Christ, that means you are a new living being in Christ. You are saved. The old you from the past is gone. It's all about who you are right now in Christ. You've been raised to a new person. So if you have been raised with Christ, you must seek the things above. Look towards the things above and not down. <laughs> so church, there's many, many distractions in this world. So many things are going to come up. If you've been in a battle before, and if you've been in, like, you know, people who've been in war, how many things are actually going on at once? And church, we must seek the thing that's the only center point, that's the only goal we should have in our lives, and that is Jesus. We must seek after him in the midst of the distractions. Seek after him in the midst of the mess. Seek after him in the midst of the pain. We must seek after him. If you want to think like a wolf, it starts with that. Look towards the only answer. Look up and stop looking down. Look in the second verse. It says, set your minds on things above. Set your minds on things above. So not only do we have to seek after God, we must think about him too. Wouldn't you agree that when you look at something, you're thinking about it? For a quick moment, you're thinking about it. When you look at Lord, you look at the Lord, you seek after him, you should automatically start thinking about him. You might have to be transfixed on him. Because in that moment, negativity can't enter. Because the only thing you're thinking about is the only one who can give you true peace. It's the only thing that can give you true joy, true happiness, just tranquility, and that is Jesus. 
So if you are born again, seek after him and then set your minds, set your minds upon him. In Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. To be, to not, do not be conformed to this age. Do not comply to what the world says is perfect. Do not comply to what the world says. None of that matters. Nothing of this world can ever come to you when you're gone. Nothing of this world will ever be able to come with you when you're gone. But the only thing you can bring is the love of Christ that he has for you. Church, set your mind on him. Seek after him. Do not comply to what this world says is perfect because you're never going to reach that. But you look at the one who is perfect. But you have to look up first. You have to look up. I, read, I was going through that and read that verse. And when I went home two weeks ago, this really, really came true for me. When I went home two weeks ago, I went home for Christmas, went home for like three days. I expected vacation, rest, ease, Sleep, I like sleep, praise God for sleep, resting. I expected that. I get home, I get home, I see my nieces, I get to hug them. I see my mom, I get to hug her. She asked me, can we go to Goodies? I'm like, sure, I don't care. So we drive to Goodies, and as soon as we get in the car, I am hearing about every bit of drama and every bit of struggle and pain that happened the day before. I drove home on Tuesday, all this happened on Monday. So I come home, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with this right now. Well, why am I having to deal with this issue that I can't do anything about? So I texted the staff at Discovery. I'm like, pray for me. And I went into like a neutral state. I didn't want to deal with it. I'm done. This is my vacation time. I'm resting. I went to this neutral state of mind. So all of, all of Tuesday, I was neutral. I didn't want to deal with it. Wednesday and Christmas, I was neutral. I didn't want to deal with it. And here comes Thursday. Because I can never say neutral. I can't. So I decided to step into the drama, step in to put my inputs in. My dad came home and in a rage. My mom's crying. I'm trying to be the peacemaker and calm it all down. And I'm like, I go home tomorrow. I'm leaving this crisis in the midst of the crisis, and I can't do a thing. I can't do a thing. So I drive home on Friday. And I get back to Fort Pierce, I'm like, thank God, I'm home, I'm, I'm out of there, I'm out of the crisis. But in the back of my head, in the back of my heart, no matter how happy I tried to be, it was still there. You left. You can't do anything. What are you going to do now? So I would go into work the next day, and I had this urge, I had this urge to just write in my prayer journal, I had to. So I pull it out, I start writing in it, I'm just, I'm, much, I'm venting to God. And when I get to the end of the page, at the end of each page, there's a spot for a verse to sit. And the word had the word peace in it. Just the simple word peace I've heard many, many times. And I began to just keep looking up that word over and over again. Because that's what I was desiring. I, would need, I was needing some peace in my life at this moment. I was tired of the loud noise from everything else going on around me. And I realized I had to have a conversation with myself. Mike, what are you doing? You know what to, give it to the one who has the answer. Give it to the one who, just look up, stop looking at the circumstance, look up. Look up already and look towards the one who already solved the issue. So I remember I'm sat down and I'm just like, Jesus, take it away from me. Lord, I need you. I desire you right now. I need peace right now. Father, the issue is in your hands. The crisis is in your hands. Lord, take it all. And the immense weight that lifted off of me that moment was what I needed. Church, I decided to not look at the circumstances that surrounded me. I put the shredder down and I left it down and I walked away from it. I decided to look up towards the answer and I look at my circumstance. I finally decided for the first time in a while to think like a wolf and seek after the one with the answers. My goal was him and I found it. Church, we need to do the same thing every single day because you can change the way you feel by changing the way you think. And in that moment, I felt so depressed and down and aggravated. But I changed the way I thought. And I thought about Jesus. And my emotions just flipped in a moment. Church, in this battle, in this battle, there's many fights to fight. How do you fight your battles? How do you fight your own battles? Church, how you fight your internal war will determine how you fight your external battles. It all begins right here, right here in your heart. 
how you fight in here determines how you're gonna fight outside. So where you're in this world, where you're in this war right now, right here is where it starts, right here in your heart. And church, I wanna tell you, it starts in the moment you wake up, the moment you open your eyes. That's where, it, that's where the battle begins. Because that first thought that comes to your head sets the tone for the rest of your day. So if it's a negative thought, guess what the rest of the day is going to be? You're going to be transfixed on that negative thought. How you, whatever you think of when you first get up sets the tone for the rest of your day. But listen to this. One negative thought can flip an entire day. One negative thought can flip your entire day. I got to experience that on Thursday. <laughs> So Thursday comes last week, and I decided I'm going to start doing something different. I thought nothing negative all Thursday morning. I was up at 3. I'm about to go to work, had my praise music on, having a journal out. I was having a blast. I get to work first two hours, great. Next three, I was ready to throw a drink at somebody today. I was ready. <laughs> I was so frustrated. I was messing things up. I was getting made fun of while I was messing things up. I, was, I walked out of there so frustrated. I was so angry with everything. Walk back in the office, I stopped. I let little frustrations overtake everything of God's mercy and love for me in that moment. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? In church, we do that every day. We wake up great, we start out great, something happens and we plummet straight down. Straight down. We need to figure out and remind ourselves, how much has God done for you already in this one day? And focus on that, think about that, and your feelings won't flip. They'll stay steady because he is steady. You don't have to think about everything you feel, but you will feel everything you think about. Church, you can change the way you feel by changing the way you think. And church, there's no one in their right minds that wakes up in the morning, stretches out, gets ready and says, it's a good day to have a bad day today. It's bad day weather, right? If you do do that, we're gonna have a special prayer time for you in the back because I'm worried now. I'm concerned. Church, think about him. Think about Jesus. Everything he's done for you, he can change the way you think and he'll change the way you feel. But you have to focus on him first. Set your minds on him and him alone. Do not let the circumstances choose for you. Do not let circumstances choose for you. Because the moment you let that happen, negativity enters again. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. Let all the negative energy and negative thoughts come right back in so we, we can shred ourselves again. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now, to reading that, doesn't that sound like Jesus? Pure, just, commendable, worthy of praise. Doesn't that sound like the one who died for us in the first place? It says, think about these things. When these things enter your mind, there's no more room for negativity anymore because your Jesus is on your mind. Someone in this room right now, someone joining us online, already woke up in a bad mood. Let's fix that right now. Think about Jesus right now. Think about him because I guarantee you the rest of your day from here in this point will change because your mind is transfixed on the one who will never leave you or forsake you. We need to fasten our thoughts to everything that God has done and continues to do for us. In church, on the day when the painting was shredded and destroyed, it was worth $1.4 million while it was still intact. 1.4, that's still a huge number to me. 1.4 million. When it, when it was shredded, the price skyrocketed. <laughs> it was worth more shred than when, it, than when it was, it was intact. That made no sense to me. I asked, what? <laughs> Why? Because it was just one aspect of what the artist's mind had to offer. One aspect. In church, just like this canvas that was shredded, our lives are the same. Brokenness, pain, suffering, regret, everything that's negative, we bring to the table and we shred ourselves every day. We shred it. And here comes Jesus walking in to the scene 
saying, all those people on that stage, I want them. Give me them right now. I'll buy them. They're mine. All these shredded, torn human beings that are not worth anything to everybody else or worth everything to him. He goes, give me them. I'll buy them. So he pays this ultimate debt we owed and then takes us back and puts us on the most beautiful picture in the world. That's his family, his family portrait. Church, let's think about these things. Just think about these things. That Jesus would die for you, sacrifice it all for you, so you can just be and have a new life and have a new life and live it abundantly. Church, that, that's what we're meant to do. But in this war, it gets a little difficult, it gets hard, things come up, and it tries to take our eyes off the real goal takes our minds and tries to distract us and bring us somewhere else. But church, you can change the way you feel by changing the way you think. So look back towards the goal. Think about the only one who's ever, ever loved you enough to die for you. And he sacrificed it all, transfixed everything on him. And forget every bit of negativity because you're brand new in Christ. And church, we declare war today. We declare war today. Not tomorrow, but today. One of the first things I learned while coming down here, one of the first things I learned from Pastor Tim and Pastor Mike, do not be conform, no, excuse me. Do not put off for tomorrow what you can get done today. The war is not gonna wait for you. The war is not gonna wait for you to be ready. I'm ready now. No, it's happening. It's in, you're in it. It's, it's over, you're ready here. You're here. Today we declare war. Today we declare war. No more running, no more hiding. It's time to step up and time to stand up. Church, let me ask you to stand up for me. Everyone stand up to the feet if you can, if you're able. Church, today's the day. It's a new day. It's a new day. Church, let's declare war today. There's so many things that are happening in this life. I want you to look around you for a couple seconds. Talk about being wolves and thinking like wolves. Church, a wolf always surrounds himself with a pack, and the pack is a family. Look around you right now. This is our pack. This is our family. And when we're in battle, when you put on the armor of Christ, all these pieces were meant to move forward, not to turn and run away. So when one of us falls down, let's pick him up and stop grumbling, complaining. Let's move forward and be grateful and encourage one another to keep pushing forward with Jesus as the leader as the Alpha and the Omega for the beginning and the end. Follow him. Let's follow him together into 2020. Everything 2019 in the past now. However you ended it, you ended it. Today's a new day. Today's a new year. Let's declare war together. So on the count of three, we're all going to shout out together, I declare war. One, two, three.